and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Today we're going to be talking about shop medical kits and what I have included in mine and why I have the things that I have in mind so that you guys can kind of look through your thought process, your shop setup, and kind of think through how you want to set up your medical kit as well. So to start off, a little bit about the background of my shop, where it's located, and I think this really helps to inform why I set up my shop medical kit the way that I did because your situation is going to be completely different or it may be similar, but it's going to feed into why you have certain and things in your medical kit. For me, my shop is detached from the house. I'm probably about 100, 200 feet away from the house. And so it's not like I can just go to my house medical kit anytime I get um, something uh, like a splinter, laceration, whatever it is, or a scrape. I can't just go to my shop medical kit. <laughs> Sorry, I can't go to my house medical kit when I want to. So I wanted to have something separate for the shop itself. If you're working in a garage or woodworking in a garage, um, you probably just have access to whatever your house has access to, including a sink, band-aids, all the normal stuff that you would have in a house medical kit, and you're probably pretty safe not to have one in your shop, but again, it depends on your situation. Because I'm detached, I wanted to have something separate that was gonna live out in my shop so that I could address things a little bit more quickly. The other thing that I was thinking through as I was trying to put my medical kit together are the different types of injuries that I could sustain while I'm in the shop, and I came up with really four different classes of injuries. Your first class, or the lowest class, are gonna be the things like the splinters, the scrapes, the lacerations, even minor lacerations, but things that don't require you to go to the hospital hospital or into the house or anything else, you can basically just simply patch yourself up and keep working and you're just fine. The next level of injury is going to be something that requires you to go clean out the wound, inspect it a little bit more carefully, make sure that you don't need to go to the hospital. But all in all, you can patch it up. You just need to spend a little bit more time making sure that things are fine or stop for the day because you really need to make sure that things are good and it's just gonna take a little bit of time for things to get back together. The third class of injury are things that you can't necessarily deal with at your house. These are the things that are going to require stitches or something a little bit more serious or a medical professional to take a look at them. And these are gonna be an ER visit or an urgent care visit, something to go to the hospital, um, but not something that's necessarily life-threatening, just something that you can't deal with at your house or in your shop. And then the fourth class of injury is going to be the thing that potentially is life-threatening because working in a wood shop, there are tools that can um, kill you as I like to say you can go from zero to dead in just a couple of seconds if you're not careful. Those are the types of injuries that I wanted to be prepared for. So when I'm looking at my shop medical kit and those four different classes of injuries, um, because my shop is detached from the house, I wanted to be able to deal with number one really easily so that I can just patch up those splinters, the scrapes, um, the lacerations, small little things that I wanted to be able to keep working through. And so I have stuff for that. But then between going into the house to get things patched up and then going to the hospital to get things patched up, there's nothing really I can do in my shop and so there's not really a good reason for me to keep stuff in my shop that is going to be prepared for that. But the fourth option or the fourth level of injury, which is a life-threatening injury, is something that I wanted to be prepared for because it's the type of thing that you can't necessarily drive yourself to the ER and you need somebody to come help you ASAP, but you need to make sure that you don't die in the process of waiting for EMS to arrive. Okay, so without further ado, there's only three things that I have in my shop medical kit. One is a package of bandages, variety bandages. This has finger bandages, uh, larger bandages, just a variety of bandages that have a little bit of antibiotic ointment already on them. And then I also have some Bactine. Um, the nice thing about Bactine is that it has some lidocaine in it. And so if you've got something that's stinging, it takes the sting off a little bit, but it's also antibiotic. And so it helps to prep that for later. Now, by no means is this a patch it up and just leave it there. This is usually a temporary, use those two things, get myself patched up so that I can keep working through my project. And then when I get back into the house later that night, later that day, I can take it off, wash everything out, make sure that everything's clean and then patch it up in a nice, clean, much more sterile environment than the shop. This is really just a get started, don't get blood on whatever I'm working on so that I can kind of keep working through things. But skipping past two and three, because if it's anything that's gonna require me to go get stitches or something I need to take care of in the house, I'm just gonna grab a wad of paper towels, wrap up whatever it is, go into the house, take care of it there, or drive to the hospital at that point. So for the life-threatening injuries, that highest level of injury that I could potentially have, I have a tourniquet. Now, I got this tourniquet from North American Rescue, and you should really be careful when you're buying your tourniquets because there's a whole bunch of counterfeits out there that could potentially work, but you don't really know if they're gonna work fine. And you get all the different things where it's like you can use a shirt, you can use a belt, you can use something else, but there's nothing that can replace having a real and legitimate tourniquet on hand so that you can save yourself. Now, the type of injury that I'm talking about on this one is if for some reason you slipped or if I slipped and my entire hand goes through the table so I'll like pretend it goes like right through the middles of my fingers. You know, it just makes me cringe thinking about 
That's the type of thing that if I hit any of the veins in my wrist, it's possible that I could bleed out in a matter of minutes or a little bit longer than that, but I don't have a lot of time to wait for EMS. And so I need to figure out a way to save myself really. And the tourniquet, when you need a tourniquet, is really the only tool on hand that you're gonna be able to have. Anyways, I know that there's a lot of opinions and I do wanna caveat that I am not a medical professional and so this may not necessarily be the perfect kit, but this was me trying to think through those four different classes of injuries that I wanted to be prepared for in a detached shop because I don't have immediate access to my house. But I don't think that this is gonna work in every and absolutely all situations. This is really situationally dependent, depending on what your situation is. If you are a medical professional, or if you've had an accident that has informed you on what you should have in your shop, or you've just thought about this more than I have, or you've thought about this a lot, I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below on what is in your shop medical kit or what you have ready in your medical kit so that you can take care of what you need to. Anyways, thank you guys. I'd really appreciate you being around. Have a happy and safe time woodworking and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, bye.